Currently, getting a new graphics card is like getting a new car. It won't happen and even if it does, you will pay double if not triple for it. So how about using one of the older models that you might have laying around your house? And in this video, I will answer one simple question as fast as possible. Can a Nvidia GTX 660 graphics card still be used today? The GTX 660 was launched on the September 6th, 2012, and it was quite a good value for a mid-range graphics card. Of course, what you really wanted was the GTX 660 Ti, but that one was often more expensive than it was worth it, so you just got the 660 and call it a day. Since then, many moons have passed and the GTX 660 is no less than 10 years old at this point, and still it retains some of its value. And by that I'm simply saying that with the current situation with graphics cards, both new and used, a used GTX 660 is selling for much more than it's actually worth. But what if you have one already? We shall see. First, you need to understand that the age of this graphics card and what that means. The final driver that offered full support for the GTX 660 was the 472.98, released on February 1st, 2022. This means one simple thing, you will have to downgrade your NVIDIA drivers to the last driver that officially supported these graphics cards. While the GTX 660 might work with newer drivers, the instability that you get is simply not worth the effort. The GTX 660 that I am using in this video is made by MSI and it's the basic model, not the twin frozer model. Even so, it should be enough for our needs in this video. The system used with this graphics card has an Intel i9-9900K CPU and 64GB of DDR4 RAM. All games tested in this review will be running at various settings but always at 1080p. We start with the best game to test a 10 year old graphics card, Cyberpunk 2077. And good news! You will get around 300 frames per second in the menu. In the actual game, things are a bit slower, between 7 to 10 frames per second, so basically a slideshow. This is with everything turned to high and ultra, but RTX turned completely off. And what would happen if everything is switched to low? Things improve greatly from 7 frames per second to around 17 frames per second, give or take, based on your location in the game. Next up we have Grand Theft Auto 5, running in DirectX 10 mode and at maximum settings at 1080p, and this game is playable in 900% of the locations including deep in the main city at night, that's the hardest part for any system as there are plenty of reflections rendered at the same time and a lot of light sources, however this was not surprising at all because GTA 5 is an old game, launched in 2013. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next and with the game running at maximum settings and in DirectX 11 mode, you will average 20 frames per second in most of the levels. However, this game is not playable at this level of quality as the frame rate will bounce between 22 frames per second and 15. The optimal way is to turn everything down to low settings and see what kind of performance you get. In my case, with everything set up to low and medium, the frame rate stayed at around 30 frames per second which is playable for console users. If you like The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, then you are in luck as the GTX 660 will deliver a solid 50 frames per second at 1080p with all settings turned to low. If you go higher on some settings, you will hover at around 40 frames per second with some decent visual quality. Not bad for a GTX 660 and just 2GB of video memory. In Metro Exodus and with everything set to low, you will get an average of 30 frames per second at 1080p and don't even try to go higher in the graphics settings, as this game will often crash due to the low video of memory of the GTX 660. It's the limitation of the graphics card and of the newer technology used in this game. However, with everything set to low, the GTX 660 still offers a good gaming experience. The NVIDIA GTX 660, a graphics card that was launched no less than 10 years ago. A graphics card that was never a high-end model but yet, so many years later, it can hold its own even in modern AAA video games. It will not run these games at maximum settings, no matter what. 2GB of video memory is not enough for higher resolution textures, however, it will run many games and offer a good gaming experience. 
There isn't much to say. The GTX 660 is a surprisingly good graphics card and I am glad that I kept mine as a backup. And nowadays, this graphics card will work great for a mid-range gaming system that will not break the bank. If you can find a GTX 660 for a good price, take it. It will handle a lot of games and will serve you well. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more, and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages of this channel.